Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and I like knitting. Um, so I sporadically, hopefully more regularly this year, but sporadically come here on YouTube and share with you everything that I am making. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. And so nice to have some time today to sit down with you and share with you everything that I have been, all the making that I've been up to. So pour yourself a drink, uh, grab yourself some knitting. Apologies if there's like background noise, there's bugs, there's cars. I've got all the windows and doors open because it's a gorgeous day here in Brisbane. Um, so I'll just talk loud and hope that the camera picks, the um, phone picks me up and not all the other noise, but oh well. Um, it is, it's been a while, so I might be a bit rusty. I've also had quite a bit of coffee this morning, so who knows what vibe we're going for today. So before I get started on all the projects to show you, um, I'll quickly tell you about what I'm wearing. So this is the Irene Top by Sari Nordland. I made it, I think, the beginning, like last summer, at the beginning of last year, so about 12 months ago, I think. I don't know. Um, but it's this really cute summer top. It's an all over kind of textured, I think it feels like and looks like it's like all over broken rib with this fun little detail that kind of looks like a tog top. It's super fun. I've got it tucked into some um, high waisted shorts today, but it's a really, it's a really fun summer top. It actually, for the fact that it's like an all over texture top, I remember it knitting up like quite quickly. Um, it was a really fun project to work on. I love this colour too, this like khaki green. It's so cool. Um, so yeah, that is what, oh, I am talking really fast. So let's just like calm down. So that's what I am wearing today. Um, sorry if this is clinky, that's iced coffee with um, some ice cubes in it. I actually recently got a new cold brew coffee brewer. Um, and so this is like my first batch in the new brewer and it's really good. I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm wearing. I have a few finished objects to share with you and I've got a little notebook. So if I start looking down, it's I've got a little notebook so I don't forget anything. Cause some of these I did finish a few months ago. So the first finished objects I have to show you is a pair of socks. So these are knit in Knit Picks Felici in the Palm Springs colorway. Can't remember if I showed these before or not. I may even show them as a finished object, but you're getting them again. Um, they're a really cute sock. So I knit these as the way I knit most of my um, plain self-striping socks. So I, about two, 20 rows of two by two rib, but just kind of until the end of this stripe. So I just knit it until it looks about the right length and then transition at the end of a stripe. Um, and then a heel flap and gusset with an eye of partridge heel flap. Cute. And I knit them uh, 64 stitches on a two millimeter needle. And I just love this colorway. It's so fun. Um, even though it does that thing that quite a lot of Felici colorways do where it has two colors that are super close together. I, but it looks cool. I really like kind of the, it's like fun and springy and yeah and this like pale peachy color is so pretty next to the purple i really like orange and purple together like as a color scheme um but yeah that is a pair of socks um i washed them i blocked them um it was a very good knitter but yeah they're very cute very fun pair of socks nothing else really revolutionary to say about those I don't know why I'm like stuffing them down the side of my couch. That's going to be really distracting when I just put them down. So I have quite a few garments to share with you. So I'm just going to work down through this pile that's sitting next to me. And I also, oh, I will also have some little video clips of me wearing them um, that I filmed. So organized. Um, just so you can actually see what they look like on a person because it's a bit hard to tell with me holding them up and trying to like model them sitting down, it never really works. So I'm just like trying something new. Look at me, technical video editing skills. Um, hope I get an Oscar nomination for this episode. Um, so this first garment that I have to show you, um, it's kind of a riff 
on the Lorelei vest by Bronte Swanick, my friend Bronte. I'll link her, she has last year started a YouTube channel as well, so I'll link her YouTube down below where she talks about knitting and books and planners and things. Um, but I have made the Lorelei vest before, like as per the pattern, it's a bulky weight vest um, that I made using like a eight ply and a four ply held together to make a bulky weight and like a cool mild effect. Love that little vest. Um, but so basically I had this yarn in my stash. So it is the Wool and the Gang Buddy Hemp yarn, which I believe is a cotton hemp blend. I thought maybe it was discontinued because it hadn't been on the Wool and the Gang website for a while, but I've, I think I noticed recently it's back on. So it must've just been like a supply issue but um it's a really lovely yarn to work with so it's like a um i think i should have a look like it in a ball here let me just rummage around in this project bag very professional here we go yeah so this is the um gray color so i knit it what is the colorways i used were ivory white and eagle gray and it's kind of like a chain construction it's i think it's either an eight about a 10 ply weight but it's really nice to work with. It's quite dry, like lots of um, plant-based fibers are, but um, it was like, I don't mind. Um, that's not something that is a problem for me. It's not as dusty as like, um, as plain, like straight cotton can be, you know, have that kind of like, it just feels dusty. Um, this doesn't quite have that, but it's still a nice mat and the um, yarn and the structure, it's really nice and structured with the little, chain plying however they do that um so i bought two skeins of the white and the gray of this i think originally thinking i was going to do like a striped t-shirt or something um but i kind of uh, didn't really want to do that anymore so i just had it sitting in my stash oh the dogs are going crazy hope everyone's okay oh they're settling i think someone must have just been walking um I'm pretty sure because I walk up and down my street a lot I think I even know which dogs they are that are barking um but yeah so I had two skeins of each of those colors in my stash and I just didn't know what to do with them kind of just wanted them not to be stashed anymore so I decided to kind of use the um Lorelei vest pattern as like a framework to uh make a color blocked tank top so um I knew this yarn was like kind of a similar weight to I a while ago I made like a t-shirt out of uh, Juniper Moon Farm cotton yarn um, and I knew that this was around the same weight as that so I kind of looked at the needle size I used for that and the gauge I did do I think I did do a gauge swatch and see what my gauge was I liked the fabric and then did a bit of maths and worked out if I knit the size six in the pattern um, I would get a nice comfy tank top size. I usually wouldn't, I know people do that quite, do kind of do that quite a lot. I wouldn't always recommend because especially if there's a lot of like um, shaping and like uh, around like armholes and things, you can't always necessarily just like scale up and down a pattern depending how it's been graded. Um, so like take it with a grain of salt, but it worked really well. I just wanted like a comfy, cozy, casual, um, tank and it worked out really well so yeah it's just a nice color blocked tank top I was hoping it would use up all of both of the colors but um it didn't um but it's a really nice length on it um so you can kind of like even wear it like over bike shorts or leggings and it does kind of cover the top of your butt um but yeah just a nice casual easy to wear color blocked tank um and yeah there's nothing else really I think so yeah, I knit it on, as I said, I knit the sixth size and I used five millimeter needles. Um, I don't think I maybe went down a size for the ribbing, but also maybe I didn't. No, I think I did. No, I didn't. Who knows? If there's two needle sizes on my Ravelry project page, I went down a size for the ribbing, um, but I don't think I did. Um, so yeah, that is my Lorelei tank top. Um, yeah, first finished object. Oh, I talked about that for way longer than I thought I would. So let's crack on. 
Um, I have another tank top to share with you. Um, this beauty is the Parsley Tank by Claire Mountain Manapon. Um, it's a really lovely tank top, um, which is kind of plain stockinette with this really beautiful detail on the sides. So it's kind of, it's this is all done with, um, just with twisted and slipped stitches. So it almost gives the effect of a cable, but it's like flattened and like two dimensional. It's really cool. Um, and my other favorite detail of this pattern is around the bottom, around the hem, it has these little eyelets. Ooh. Wow, this is really great demo, Eleanor. Um, but yeah, it has this really pretty eyelets around the hem. I think that's just such a gorgeous little detail. So this is, a uh, that's backwards. This tank top is knit bottom up. So you knit the um, twisted ribbing. Um, oh, I think it's only half twisted. Yeah, it's only half twisted. Um, so you, it's got a split hem on the side. So you knit the front and back pieces separate and then join it in the round and um, then work the wet your way up. The body has a really gentle A-line shape. And the other great detail of this is as you work up and split um, the front and back for the armholes, for the, um, this edging is um, kind of done as you go. So there's, you don't have to do any finishing on the, um, on the armholes, because that's all done as you go. And it makes this really, really um, beautiful, clean, like almost eye cord effect edge. It's really, really lovely. Um, so like really, neat and clean finish on the armholes without really any without any picking up or any effort um it's just gorgeous i love this so much and it was really like really straightforward to knit i do remember having a couple of um hiccups because i can't read i think i may have mentioned this in an i feel like i'm having deja vu um which could be just because i recorded this podcast last week and the video file didn't um work going from my phone to my editing software um, and I chucked a hissy and deleted it. Um, it's very patient Aries energy around here. Um, but I did have a couple of hiccups while making this and it's because I can't read. Um, and there was a couple of sections where I did like six stitches instead of 16 stitches or the other way around. But I like, just didn't see the one or saw a one that wasn't there. Anyway, um, 100% operator error is a great pattern, really well written. Um, I've knit a few of Claire's patterns before and they're always, always so many fun details and really thoughtfully made. Um, the yarn that I used for this is a yarn I've wanted to use for a really long time. It's the, um, it's called Field of Dreams and it's a collaboration between Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills and the girls at the Pearl Box. So it's a Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills yarn. I think it's, it's like Polworth, Suri and linen blend um, and then dyed in these really nice colorways and because of the, the blend of animal and plant fibers they kind of take the dye a bit differently and it makes this really beautiful like heathery effect in the yarn. This colorway is called Woodland. Um, annoyingly enough I think when I bought the yarn I thought I would be making the size 4 of this pattern and I did cast on for the size 4 and did the um, the hems and it just looked way way too big and then I really looked at the I looked at the garment measurements again and they kind of recommended ease and how it looked on um, everyone else's projects and I did decide to go down a size so I knit the third size in this one and I used the recommended needle sizes I believe so um, a four millimeter needle and then a 3.5 for the ribbing um, so because I did go down a size it did mean does mean that I have a whole like untouched skein of this yarn left um, which I have no idea what to do with. Um, so if you have any suggestions for what to do with a hundred grams of eight ply yarn, um, hit me up in the comments. It does have little marks that's been folded and in some lights, oh yeah, there you go. So I didn't alternate skeins. Um, it does tell you cause it is, I think yeah, it is hand dyed. So even though it's like a solid color, they say alternate skeins, I didn't. Um, and I swear in real life, 
you can't see that giant split that line that you can I, you can see it on my screen you can probably see it as well in photos and like video it is so stark I swear in real life it's not it's not visible at all like if you stare at it for a few minutes you can see it but if you're just looking at it normally it's not obvious so take that as you will if you that, that those kind of things really really bother you alternate skeins if they don't don't alternate skeins but this is such so gorgeous i'm so glad i've wanted to i've had think i think i bought this pattern as soon as claire released it like four years ago now or something crazy like that and this yarn i've wanted to work with for such a long time so i'm really thrilled to have this piece all done so another finished top for you um I feel so prolific but it's just because I haven't recorded in like months um, so this beautiful beautiful top is the Demoiselle by Kristen Jones that's published in an old old issue of Ami Risu magazine um you can just buy the pattern individually now because it's been like 100 years um but yeah, I, this is another project that I have wanted to make for the longest time because I just think it is so, so nice. It looks really weird when it's not on a person. So like, please refer to me wearing it um, for more of an idea because it looks just like crazy, like a weird blob. Um, but yes, I knit this in the same yarn as the sample. Um, so it is Wool and the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton in the colorway Lipstick Red, which is just a really beautiful... The red does come up ever so slightly more warm toned on the screen. In um, in real life, it has more of like a ruby woo vibe, like that nice um, cool tone, straight up red. Um, and it's, it's beautiful all over lace top. Um, so I knit this, I'm having to refer to this book all the time, I'm so sorry. Um, I knit the size large using um, 6 mil and 5.5 mil needles as per the pattern. I don't think I gauge swatched and um, I just, excuse me, I just winged it, wung it, wang it, winged it. Um, and honestly, I think I probably could have gone down a size. Um, but once again, I bought the yarn. I think I kind of started knitting it and thought this looks like quite big, but it is supposed to be kind of quite uh like the it's, the design it's meant to be quite drapey and a lot like the sleeve like it's meant to have that kind of bat wing oversized almost like 80s fit that I love um so I did think about maybe ripping out and going down a size but I bought my yarn based on making like with the yardage for a size large and I didn't really want to have a heap of yarn left over and not know what to do with like a random white, like random amount of worsted weight cotton. Um, I still did have a little bit left over, um, but yes. And one of the reasons I probably have a little bit left over is the only mod I made was in the pattern, um, you pick up and do a little bit of ribbing for the sleeves. And when I had got to this point, I tried it on and I was really happy with where the, um, where the kind of dropped shouldery detail, I was really happy with where it sat on my arm. I didn't want to add any more length to it. Um, the way the increases go in this particular size, you do end up with a slightly larger panel of stockinette on the sides than you do in some of the other sizes. Like on the sample, you don't have quite as much stockinette on the sides. So, I think from looking at the instructions, I think in the lot, this particular size, you have the most of this. So it kind of does function like a little um, sleeve detail anyway. So I didn't feel the need to, um, to pick up and knit the ribbing. And um, there's also, you don't do anything. The um, neckline is just the cast off edge. So once it's really great, it's knit from the bottom up. And like, once you have seamed the shoulders together, you're done, which is really cool. Um, so you start at the bottom, it's knit in the round, and then you do these increases on the body, which look bonkers. It looks really weird um, 
when it's not on you but as you would have seen it gives that kind of really cool bat wing effect and the lace repeat is really straightforward very easy to get into the rhythm of and kind of once you've done it a couple of times um you i kind of found myself like looking at the chart at the start of the row just to like work out like wh which part of the repeat i was up to and then i could kind of just go for the round i knew um yeah could, you can very easily get into the rhythm of it and i think it for such a simple lace repeat it's really really effective i think it's really lovely i finished this literally i think on christmas eve or maybe like the day before because i think i did go i went over to my parents the day before christmas eve i think um so i literally was like seaming this together 10 minutes before I left which um, if ever I make something for an event is very on brand but really fun to have this like it's not like specifically Christmassy but nice to have this really pretty red garment to wear for Christmas um, it is because it is quite a like the holes in the lace are quite big so I think actually even when I'm modeling it modeling it why do I keep saying that well I'm wearing it I think I've I filmed those clips last week so I think I was wearing it over a um like a dress or a jumpsuit and I did that on Christmas as well I wore this over just like a black slip dress um if you're feeling sassy and I guess because it is quite a heavyweight cotton really everyone um people have places to be um you could I reckon you could get away with just wearing it like with a bra underneath I think that would be cool um, I would do that. Not everyone would, but yeah, it's really easy to wear it over like a dress or a top. And yeah, it's just, it's really gorgeous and very like, feels like very statementy. y um, And yeah, I really love it. It looks so weird and so big. Like when I finished it, I remember looking at it and just thinking this looks like ludicrously big. Um, and oh, I've not woven in, I've only woven in the visible ends. There's one on this sleeve that pokes out every so often, but I promise, I promise I'll weave it in. Um, but if you kind of just like tuck it in as you wear it, it's fine. Um, yeah. It's just, I just looked at it, I was like, it's too big, it's too big, but it looks fine on your body. And it does like, the shape is really, really cool. So yeah, that's a really fun, really fun pattern. Um, didn't take too, too long. It is, as I said, like it's like a worsted weight yarn on a six millimeter needle. Um, sorry, my nose is so itchy. Um, so it was really, really fun and yeah, just a real joy, real fun, real fun thing to work on. Um, yeah, really good, like involved, but not too involved. Like you could knit it watching the TV, but it still had like details in it which probably like december november time i don't know about you but like work always gets hectic everyone's personal lives get hectic i don't know about you guys but um for everyone at work was having like a personal crisis in december so it was good to just come home and have something to think about that wasn't other people's problems and uh, so that is the demoiselle i also don't know if i'm saying that correctly but I'm not French. So I have one more finished object to share with you and it is a big one. Um, apologies, it's gonna be covered in fluff. I did lint remover it a little while ago, but this yarn, I swear, just attracts every piece of fluff possible. So this is the Cloud Bow Dress which is a pattern by Reed Keys for Pom Pom Magazine. I don't know if it's out, I don't think it's out for original, for, um, not original, what's the word? Individual sale yet. Um, but it is a pattern. What was I saying in that sentence, Eleanor? I'm not sure if it's out for individual sale yet, but it is in, I think it's last spring's issue of Pom Pom Magazine. Um, and there are so many gorgeous versions of this pattern on the internet. So it's a kind of mix and match style pattern. So it's, there's instructions in the um, magazine to make it either as a, like a peplum top or a dress, but you can definitely like mix and match. I think in the 
sample photos. They've got the top with long sleeves and the dress with short sleeves. You can totally mix and match those. You can decide how many increases you do, how, like how full you want the volume to be. Um, so, oh, excuse me, my nose is so itchy. Um, so I decided I've kind of straight up copied. So when this, when the magazine issue came out, the designer Reed had um, done a version in all black that I thought was so, so cool. So I just wanted to copy her and I kind of vaguely in her Instagram caption, she described what she did. And so I um, just kind of followed what loosely what she did. So um, I knit the, I think the fourth size. And the yarn that I used is um, FOMO by Moda Vera from Spotlight, which is just like a acrylic fake mohair. Um, so it was, I think at full price, it's maybe like $3 a ball and I got all of it on sale. So this was a very, very affordable project too. So um, I did, so you start, uh, you start, um, with like you do the front and back panels and then you pick up and do the sleeves and then from the sleeves you pick up the body then do increases and then you just go like the clappers for the for the length um so i did the um full number like the full peplum increases on the body which i think is more the dress version there are some that are, if you look at people's Ravelry projects, some people have more of like a straight body, so they don't do quite as many increases. But I did the full peplum increases on the body. And the only modification I made from the pattern was the finishing on the sleeves and the neckband. So I believe in the pattern, it has you knit um, in stockinette, like double the length, and it has like fold over cuffs and a fold over neckband. Um, the idea, of doing a fold over anything in lace weight, fuzzy yarn in black uh, sounded horrendous to me. So what I did on the sleeves is um, I did a little bit, so on the sleeves of the neckband, I held the um, fuzzy yarn together with a four ply like cotton yarn actually I think I used a Lindy chain from Knit Picks that I had left over from another project that was also in black so that's a cotton linen blend um but so I held those together just to give it a little bit more structure on the um on those edges so on the sleeves I knit a little bit of stockinette and then did an I-cord bind off um, because they've got like this puffy sleeve detail it just I think helps the um sleeve this is about uh, zero ease on my arm circumference maybe a tight like it it's not like it's not constricting but it is like fitted so that you kind of get the effect of that puffy sleeve and then around the neckband I did the same thing I held the fuzzy yarn together with the um cotton linen and I just did a one by one rib and then a stretchy bind off because it's black I figured you're not really there was no point in putting myself through the agony of trying to like do a folded over thing and stitch it down um, and destroy my eyesight for something you're not like you're not really gonna see because it's all black um, and so for the length um, it's quite long uh, so I kind of had an idea of how long I wanted it to be on me so I do have a ready-to-wear dress that was about the length I was thinking of so I just measured the um, length that I knit based on that ready to wear dress. And that dress has a little ruffle at the bottom as well. So I kind of use that for working out the proportions. So you kind of knit, 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 and then do some increases so it's slightly ruffled. And then I just bound off. I didn't do any like edging on the bottom other than the bind off. Um, and I just did like a knit two together bind off. Um, nothing fancy, because once again, it's like black fuzz, it's down by my feet. Um, it doesn't need, and like, I have no idea how many stitches. So a couple of times I did drop a few stitches here and there because it is like a loose gauge on a fine yarn. Um, and I just like picked them up and sewed them down. So God knows how many stitches I actually had on the needle. Um, so yeah, the bind off, I just went, did something as simple as possible. 
um but i love it it's so cool it's so cool to have like something this like i don't know it's because it i mean it's just a it's a black dress which is not unusual for my wardrobe but it's just like such a cool thing to have this thing that I made I never thought I would knit a dress I've seen like knitted dress patterns before and thought my god I cannot be bothered to do that um but it was kind of I would compare this to I probably the way other people feel about blanket knitting so it was just something that I would pick up and put down I didn't have a time limit on it for myself I didn't have a deadline um it was just something really calm and relaxing to have um and just knitting forever in stockinette was just an absolute pleasure so I definitely see myself I haven't like as you know last year I did knit a little blanket um I don't I didn't like fall in love with blanket knitting it was like that was a cute and fun project and it's not very big um so it was fine but like I was didn't think oh now I just want to always have a blanket on the needles but I did really really enjoy the process of knitting this dress way more than I thought I would I didn't think I would find any joy I even foresaw myself like putting this down for months at a time but I just had the best time <laughs> just such a nerd just sitting there thinking I just am having the time of my life knitting this giant black dress um in my head I kind of call it my witch dress it has like a real like witchy vibe to it and which I love and yeah I could definitely I already do have yarn to knit another dress at some point probably pretty soon and um, there's like 7,000 things I want to cast on so I'm trying to show something that resembles restraint so um let me just check I gave you all of the details yeah I said what yarn I did I said that so the main body is um knit on 6.5 millimeter needles which I believe is a recommended size in the pattern and as I said as I said I knit the size four there's quite a lot of ease in the top of this so I don't think I gauge swatched I just kind of went for it I'm really happy with the fabric really happy with how it looks it's really cute and as I said if you go on the hashtag for this dress on um, Instagram or if you look at all the projects on Ravelry people there's like so much room for creativity with this pattern uh, people have done so many some of them are really like Fine. some of them are really like sophisticated and like sleek and chic um there's just so many options like I feel like no matter what your vibe is there is a version of this cloud bow pattern that would fit in for you it's so fun um but as I said just I you can probably tell I've just been sitting here picking fluff off of it I feel like that is now my full-time occupation for the rest of my life will be picking fluff off this dress because it is just like a fuzz magnet but yeah I'm so thrilled it's, and it just feels like it feels like an achievement and I think it's been probably has, because I, I like I've been knitting for a while I'm pretty experienced I don't ever really feel intimidated or like overwhelmed when it comes to like a pattern but this is like a real sense I felt a real sense of achievement with knitting this which is just so, so cool and nice to have like it's good to feel accomplished but sometimes it's good to like push yourself a little bit um yeah I'm not going to be sincere or feeling you now but that's um yeah just like a real sense of accomplishment as you can tell by the fact that I just keep gushing about this dress so that is all of the finished stuff I have to show you I did do a couple of gift knits but they're long gone so um whatever let's get on to my works in progress that I have two to show you that was not a well-constructed sentence but you get what I mean so the first one that I have is the sun gazer top which is a really cool modular pattern by James N Watts um I'm knitting this in a Noro yarn sorry because I'm nearly done the balls are just absolutely destroyed um so it's the Noro Mirai does it say it? yeah it does in the colorway 18 sorry it's reversed on the camera and I'm not that switched on today um so it's like all the Noro yarns it's a really cool like color changing yarn this particular one is about an eight ply weight and it's 40% cotton, 25% silk, 25% viscose, and 10% polyamide. So it's really nice to work with, once again, a really matte yarn. Um, 
not too too dry but it does have um, the cotton kind of goes thick and thin a little bit as well so there are some nice little blips of unspun cotton that of course there's none in this bit of yarn for me to show you um, but yeah it's really nice to work with I actually got this yarn I've never worked with Nora yarn before it's usually quite expensive in Australia I don't know if it's like that everywhere else in the world but it is very expensive here um, but I was at a craft fair towards the end of last year and this lovely couple who had like a little I think they like sell yarn and knitting notions like traveling around craft shows but it was their last ever show they were retiring they bought a caravan were off on their grey nomad adventure so everything was like super discounted so um I got this yarn for a really really good price and I saw it and I saw the price I was like that's a very good price for Nora yarn so I was sitting like there at the store like on Ravelry um trying to see if I had any projects in my favorites or in my queue that I could use this yarn for and I decided on the Sun Gazer by James N. Watts which is one of James does these really cool modular kind of patterns and um, I'm almost finished I just have one sleeve and the ribbing around the bottom to go so you knit the two the front and back panels um, and then join them together. So you start with a circular cast on and you make this center square and then you pick up and knit these like sunburst, in the pattern he calls them rays, so it's kind of like a sun, um, but you go around and you pick up and knit those and then those, ugh, those eight rays and I still have some on hold, so when you finish them, you just put the stitches on hold on some waste yarn. Um, so all of the stitches stay live, like that. So then when it comes, you do the front and the back squares, and then when it comes to join them together, you just remount the stitches and do like three needle bind offs on the shoulders and the side seams. And then you pick up and you do a little sleeve and then some ribbing and then some ribbing around the bottom so there is lots of like picking up stitches as you work on the body but there isn't any seat like traditional seaming so it's a just a really really fun and interesting construction i love the way james's brain works um they do a whole bunch of really cool modular patterns kind of designed to work with a color changing yarn so um james did use a different noro yarn for the sample so you just what i do what i have done is on each side i just started a new ball so the color progression is just how it comes out of the how it comes out of the ball so you get this really cool really cool effect and this is so so fun to work on i've kind of the way I've been working on it is like each evening um, I just do one little one little ray and then pick up the stitches and then it's ready to go for the next day so which usually took me like an hour an hour and a half to do one ray um, which is a really nice amount of knitting in the evening just before going to bed um, and yeah I did notice as I went like I pick up stitches all the time like I'm not someone who doesn't like picking up stitches I mean does anyone love it but I'm even like looking at my first one to my second one how much like I can even see I mean it it's not like the first ones were messy but just getting better and better every time I picked up stitches so if you actually are wanting to practice your picking up stitches and getting them nice and even and everything this is a really this would be a really good pattern like for like upskilling or just like practicing that particular technique um because james does tell you in each ray like kind of the um, pickup rate that you should do to get the right number of stitches um so yeah it's a really just a great just a great pattern i'm knitting this second size and i used a 4.5 millimeter needle um i did do a gauge swatch because um this pattern is like your rate your row gauge is very is like important to getting the right size so it, I do definitely recommend um, doing a gauge swatch and really checking your row gauge um, so yeah I'm just so thrilled with this it's so cute I'm nearly done um, 
I've like triple checked, I do definitely have enough yarn, but I think I'm going to use up nearly every scrap of, actually I'm going to, like I'll just knit the ribbing until I think I run out of yarn, um, just to really use up all of this beautiful yarn. Um, I might save a little bit because in the pattern it does have you leave the, um, like there's no neck finishing I don't think, and it does have a really nice like boat neck. I may just pick up and crochet around the um, neck band just to even it out a little bit. I don't know. I'll see how I feel. But um, yeah, and it's all, oh, it's completely reversible. The front and back are exactly the same. So you can have to decide on the day which color you want to have in the front. So yeah, that is the Sun Gazer. Highly, highly, highly recommend. So fun to knit, so quick. Um, and yeah, I was able to get this. Um, I only have 600 meters of this yarn and I, th I think um, for my for the second size it like rec recommends about like 580 or so meters so like pretty low yardage as well so a really um, cool way to use some really interesting if you have any color changing yarn or if there's a color changing yarn you'd like to try a really cool way to kind of make the most of that um, cool color changing effect. So my last work in progress that I have to share with you today is this. It's a hat. So this is the um, Hyacinth bucket hat or Hyacinth bouquet hat for the uh, Keeping Up Appearances fans in the house. It's a really cute pattern by Sari Nordland for just a knitted bucket hat. And her sample was knit in this really cool bright green yarn. I think it was like a Sadness Garden linen or something. Um, and I'm knitting it in um, Sheepy's Katona, which I got um, on sale over Christmas in a super fun, I think this colorway is called Apple Green. It's really fun, bright green yarn and I'm holding it double. I was not sure if I'd have to hold it double or triple um, to get gauge. And this is knit at quite a tight gauge kind of to give the hat structure, um, but it's working really well held double. So, this is another, for someone who'd never done a knitted circular cast on, both of my um, current works in progress start with a circular cast on. Does that ever happen to you that like you just not intentionally will like pick up a pattern that you'll learn a new technique and then all of a sudden the next couple of patterns that you do happen to have that technique in it? That does happen to me surprisingly often. So, um, but anyway, so I, Doing a knitted circular cast on is a pain in the hole. Um, no pun intended. Um, I think, because I've done like circular cast ons in crochet and it's not annoying. In knitting, it was very annoying. So I'm thinking maybe next time I have to do one, I'm going to experiment with like doing the cast on crochet and then mounting it onto my knitting needles um, just because it was uh, not fun, um, real fiddly. So yeah, you start with a circular cast on and then just increase out and the hat is knit all over in a linen stitch and I love linen stitch. I, I have done it before and I don't remember how or when, maybe I was making some coasters or something. So on the right side, it's like really flat, like woven look and then on the wrong side, it's really cute and bobbly. So I know that Sari said for her hat, she um, turned it inside out and used the wrong side as the outside, but that you can do either way. And I guess like if you are careful when you weave in your, arm, your ends, you can just use it as a reversible, a reversible stitch. But yeah, this is really fun to work on. I love the color. It just makes me so happy to look at it um, because it's to give the hat structure, it needs to be at quite a dense, tight gauge. So I'm knitting this on 3.5 millimeter needles. I started on um, Magic Loop and now I've put it on a 40 centimeter circular needle that I usually use for hats. Um, so it, and because it's this like quite inflexible cotton yarn held double at quite a dense gauge, it is quite like hard on my hands. I can't kind of knit it for hours and hours on end. Um, I can usually get like about an hour or so before I need to stop, but yeah, it's just so cute and fun and I really want the hat. It's just like a little bit silly, um, but I, as you know, green's my favorite color and the idea of having like a bright green little bucket hat is just very appealing to me. So I'm having a lot of fun working on this as well. But as I said, it is like tough and like 
hard. Um, so yeah, you can't just, I don't think anyone could just like knit on this endlessly. It's like quite, um, quite dense. So yeah, you just do the increases and then knit the body. I'm, I think I've got like one or two like cycles of increases to go and then it will be, um, less thinking, but yeah, I'm really enjoying working on this project as well. Um, so that's all the knitting I have to share with you today. Um, I don't have any like goals or plans or anything for 2023. I just like do what I feel like as I always do. Um, but if you personally are a knitting resolution kind of person, let me know in the comments down below what you are wanting to make in 2023. Do you have a new technique you want to learn? Do you have certain patterns that you want to make? Um, do you have a make nine? Are you that organized? Let me know. I really want to hear what are you working on right now? What have you been working on while you're watching? Um, how are you? What's going on? Just let me know. Hit me up in the comments below. Come and say hi on Instagram. It's always a pleasure to hear from you and to know what what you're making in your little corner of the universe. So I hope you're all safe and well, and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye guys.